हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आवर नेक्स्ट टॉपिक इज रेडिएशन सेफ्टी एंड प्रोटेक्शन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट अस डिस्कस अबाउट द सोर्सेज ऑफ रेडिएशन एक्सपोजर सो व्हाट आर द सोर्सेज ऑफ द रेडिएशन एक्सपोजर द पीपल दे आर कॉन्स्टेंटली एक्सपोज टू स्मॉल अमाउंट ऑफ आयनाइजिंग रेडिएशन दैट इज फ्रॉम द एनवायरमेंट एज दे कैरी आउट देयर नॉर्मल डेली एक्टिविटीज सो दिस इज नोन एज दिस इज नोन एज बैकग्राउंड रेडिएशन we we are also exposed through some medical treatments and through activities involving the radioactive material what are natural background radiations radiations has always been present and it is all around us life it has evolved in a world containing significant level of ionizing radiation our bodies are adapt to it so there are four major sources of public exposure to the natural radiation they are cosmic radiation terrestrial radiation inhalation or ingestion what are the exposure from the cosmic radiation the earth's outer atmosphere it is continuously bombarded by the cosmic radiation these cosmic radiation they consist of fast moving particles that exist in space and originates from variety of sources including the sun and other other events in the universe these cosmic rays are mostly protons but can be other particles or wave energy exposure from the terrestrial radiation the composition of the earth crust it is the major source of the natural radiation the main contributors are the natural source the natural deposit of like uranium potassium and thorium which in the process of natural decay they will release small amount of ionizing radiation these uranium thorium they are present essentially everywhere the traces of these minerals are also found in building materials so exposure to natural radiation can occurs indoor as well as outdoor the third source could be exposure to the inhalation the most of the variation in the exposure to the natural radiation they result from the inhalation from the inhalation of the radioactive gases that are produced by the radioactive mineral that are found in the soil radon it is a odorless colorless radioactive gas that is produced by decay of the uranium 238 so it is a inert gas that means it it does not react with the surrounding material since the radon does not react it can readily move up through the ground and into the atmosphere the thorium it is a radioactive gas that is produced by thorium so once they are released into air these gases dilute to harmless level in the atmosphere but sometimes they become trapped and accumulate inside the building where they are inhaled by the by the people exposure to the ingestion trace amount of the radioactive material they are naturally found in content of food and drinking water so one ingested these minerals result in exposure to the natural radiation so this is a figure representing the source of global background radiation so the most the most exposure come from the radon but they are significant but they are significant contributions from cosmic and terrestrial sources including the external from the soil and the building materials so the radon here represent the 50 52% remaining are the terrestrial external cosmic and terrestrial internal radiations what is alara technology alara stands for as low as reasonable achievable according to this principle it states that everything reasonable possibly should be done to reduce the radiation exposure so the alara stands for as low as reasonable achievable the alara means avoiding exposure to the radiation that that does not have a direct benefit to you even if it is small 
so to do this you can use three uh, three basic protective measures in radiation time distance and shielding so the dentist and their staff they are occupationally exposed workers are allowed to receive up to 50 millisieverts sieverts of the whole body radiation exposure per year so in order to reduce the dental exposure we have three principles the first principle is the principle of justification in making a dental radiograph the dentist the first is the principle of justification that means to do good to do more good than harm so the uh, in the radiology that means the dentist should identify those situation where the where the benefit to patient from diagnostic exposure exceed the low risk of harm the second guidelines the second guiding rule is the principle of optimization so that holds that the dentist should use every means to reduce the unnecessary exposure to their patients and themselves so that principle is alara so according to alara the exposure to the ionizing radiation should be kept as low as reasonable achievable now let us understand the sources of radiation in the dental radiology department suppose a patient came to a dental department and is exposed to radiation what are the various rays he can be exposed first are the primary beam primary beam is defined as the radiation that is originating from the focal spot so this this the suppose this is the uh, the, the rays that are uh, they are tarf- originating from the focal spot are known as the primary rays second is the scattered uh, scattered or the secondary radiation it is the radiation that is originating from irradiated from the irradiated tissue of the patient so suppose patient is here and these are the these are the secondary radiations the third is the stray radiation that is the radiation from the x-ray tube head housing other is the scattered radiation scattered radiation is the radiation that is coming from object other than patient such as walls furniture that that the primary beam may strike now how can you protect the the mean of protection can be divided into protection of the number one is the operator second you have to protect the patient and third is the protection for the environment so f- under first we will be discussing is the protection for the operator so the two important source of x rays to which the operator is exposed are the number one is the primary x ray beam and and other is the scattered radiation originating from the from the irradiated tissue of the patient other sources are the leakage radiation through the tube head housing or the scattered x-ray from the filters or the cones now how can uh, now what are ways to protect against the primary beam the primary beam it is defined as the radiation that is emitted by the focal spot of the target so here the effort must be made so that operator can leave the room or take a suitable position behind the barrier during exposure so the operator either leave the room or took a position behind the barrier or wall during the exposure second the dental operatory they should be designed and constructed to meet the minimum shielding requirement third is the position distance rule so that state that the operator the operator should stand at least 6 feet away from the source of radiation or the operator should be at angle of 90 degree to 135 degree to the direction of the central x ray 
so if there is no shield or barrier the operator can use lead apron the film should never be held by operator ideally the film holding device should be used uh, last is avoid holding the x-ray tube head of the machine now what are the ways to protect against the leakage radiation that is the stray radiation the stray radiation is defined as radiation by any other part of the x-ray tube other than the focal spot so number one the machine should be periodically checked for the leakage and second neither the tube housing nor the cone should be hand uh, should be handheld during the exposure third is the protection from the secondary or the scattered radiation here we can use is use of high speed film uh, replace the short plastic cone with open ended lead line cone we can use adequate filtration of the primary beam use of collimator to reduce the diameter of beam or you can use is film baggage film badge pocket dosimetry can be used now how can you protect the patient the patient dose from the dental radiograph so the patient is most commonly exposed the it's to the skin or the surface exposure other target organs are the bone marrow thyroid gland and the gonads so we can use is high speed films that will reduce the exposure generally e speed films they are routinely used we can use screen films intensifying screens they also reduce the exposure time to time other is as the x rays they are less divergent at longer distance so there is decrease in the volume of patient exposed so longer focal spot distance that results in 32% reduction in the exposed tissue so we can, uh, so we have to use longer film spot focal spot film distance that results in smaller focal spot size and that increases the resolution of the radiograph we can use collimation collimation help to control the size and the shape of x ray beam allowing only the useful beam to emerge so collimation it will decrease the risk of radiation minimize the scattered radiation and decrease the fog so a sharper image and a better contrast could be seen filtration it absorbs the low energy photons So what is the purpose of the filtration suppose you paste uh, suppose you place aluminum filter in the path of beam so it will what do is it will filter out the low energy long wavelength so these long wavelength are harmful to the patient so it will it will filter out the long wavelength allowing short wavelength to pass out other thing we can use is use a higher kvp use of positioning indicating device so one of the most widely used position indicating device is long open end cylinder due to that the diagnostic quality of the image is improved and the smaller dose of the radiation they are delivered to head and neck we can uh, also use is the film holding devices they often they offer protection to the patient their use often reduces the frequency of retakes the film can be positioned more accurately in the patient mouth timers can be used use of the protective barriers like the lead apron can be used to protect the patient in the children in the pregnant women so the lead apron will provide protective benefit so the lead apron they are the secondary measure to protect the patient and should not be substituted for use for fast films you can use thyroid shields conoidal shields now the last is the protection for the environment the the surrounding environment must be protected from the radiation to avoid exposure to person to avoid exposure to the person in the environment 
the primary beam it should never be directed at any one other than the patient the patient should be positioned such that the x-ray beam is aimed at the wall of room and not through the door or other opening the wall they are made up of concrete steel or lead that will protect the adjacent room an alternative to lead it is barium due to its high atomic number high density and high linear coefficient of attenuation the barium we can use in the form of barium plaster or barium concrete the doors of the radiology room should function as secondary barrier Radi uh, radiation survey should be performed at regular intervals radiation monitoring is measuring of the x-ray exposure of the operators we can use very uh, devices like electrical devices like ionizing chamber thimble chamber or giger counter or light devices or uh, by use of light we can uh, use a scintillating counter garenkov counter or thermolucent dosimeter by the mean of thermolucency